together and say, praise the Lord. Has he opened doors and made a way for you? Come on and bless him tonight. At this time, we thank God for the man of God who's here with us on tonight. We appreciate him coming, amen, to minister to the Lord's people on tonight. I know that he pressed his way, I tell you, in all of this rain that came down. Uh, but he's here tonight, and we appreciate him coming, and we know that we have a word from the Lord on tonight, amen. And we thank God once again for all of you rest your way to come to receive what thus saith the Lord. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and let us warmly receive the one and only the elder Scott Bradley. Amen. He's going to come and let the Lord use him on tonight. Come on, let's give him a great big God bless you as he comes. Pastor Scott Bradley. God bless you, may stand. Oh, let's magnify the Lord. To be praised, sing it, Lord. Magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Hosanna! Blessed be the Rock, blessed be the Rock of my salvation. Hosanna! Blessed be the Rock, blessed be the Rock of my
train is going, what the first train didn't take. This train don't take this stuff, uh, this train, this train, uh, this train, this train, uh, I can't remember the word, but oh my god, y'all just some of y'all remember that song. And that train talking about what it wasn't taking, it wasn't taking that's what it was, it wasn't taking on that train. Say amen. Thank the Lord. But we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. God bless. Amen. Again, to this great courageous man of God. God bless uh, Superintendent Torrance Martin. Let's give God the praise and thank God for God. A courageous man of God. I thank God for him and for the first lady. God bless you tomorrow. And God bless you. Amen. Always, always such a pleasant person to be around. Uh, I have uh, here today this evening, and I, I think I had these with me the last time, but I had some of these seasons of Bishop Mason. Did I have these last time? Amen. Oh, I got some more tonight. If you didn't get one, amen. I've got some more tonight. And those of you that have, don't have one, those of you that have never uh, heard the late Bishop Mason, the founder of the Church of God in Christ. And I have said this on numerous occasions, that I believe that Bishop Mason, uh, being a historian and knowing the ministry of him, not ever hearing him personally, because when Bishop Mason passed, I was, I was only three years old. So I have absolutely no recollection of him whatsoever. But the legacy of the man still lives today and the greatness of his ministry. We are the recipients of the greatness of this man of God, whom God used greatly in the 20th century. And in many cases, was a man ahead of his time. In many cases. And so, all of the things that I've heard about Bishop Mason, and hearing this uh, sermon, this is a, a official day sermon from, from 1950. Uh, and again, it's not just five or 10 minutes, it's the whole sermon. And everything that you have heard about the legacy of Bishop Mason is recorded on this CD. You know, you hear him singing in the spirit. You hear him singing in the spirit. He gets up car and starts singing in tongues. You hear, even the way he speaks in tongues, there was a unique way about the way God used him as he began to speak in tongues. And as I begin listening to this, I don't hear a lot like that today. So there was a unique anointing on him. He began to talk about the way God used him at Azusa. He talks about his Azusa Street experience on this CD when he went to Los Angeles and knew Bishop Seymour, met Peter Bishop Seymour, knew him personally, and began to uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He talks about even when he begins to pray for the sick, look like there was a special anointing upon him. And you know, when I was listening to Bishop Mason pray, there, there, there are a few recordings about him, a few recordings that are available. And there was another where Bishop Mason began to pray, and there was just something about the way he prayed. It was just different. It was just such a such a tremendous anointing. Him. He would pray things like, God, give us wisdom and but love. And, and, and he was the one that came up with the, the, the phrase, a lying wonder. That's what he called it. Yeah, you know, he was the one that, that came up with that. And Lord, give us the wisdom of your word. And oh my God, the way he would pray, and even the revelation in his prayer. He was a unique man. He was a unique man. And I would go as far as to say, my own personal belief was that Bishop Mason belongs. Uh, in the limelight, in the, in the realm of great men such as D.L. Moody and right. John Wesley oh, yeah. and Winthrop and oh my God, Bishop Mason stands head and shoulders in those groups of people, oh Martin Luther and oh my God, John Calvin you know, Bishop Mason was a 20th century pace setter, he was a pace setter and even though a hundred years ago when the Church of God of Christ first began to start, many people laughed, many people mocked, made fun of us. But here it is a hundred years later, everybody trying to get like us. Somebody say amen. Oh my God. Bishop Mason was preaching civil rights before there were folks who knew what civil rights was. Bishop Mason had an integrated church, and the Church of God of Christ was an integrated church, even though the folk tried to segregate it. And, and, and to show you how the Lord worked it out, usually when, when black folk would visit a white church, they would sit us in the balcony. But when Bishop Mason got annoyed, the white folk went up to the balcony, and we stayed on the main floor. But do you know what happened? When the spirit came down, the folk came down from the balcony. They started dancing, black folk and white folk dancing together, and couldn't nobody do nothing about what the Holy Ghost was doing. Somebody say amen. So the ministry of the man was tremendous. So I'm saying that to say this. We have uh, a, a, a CD here available that I would encourage you to get. I've got a few of these. They're only $10. They're only $10. And I believe you'll be greatly blessed. I want to say that even when you listen to the, the technology that we have today, it's almost like dead men's bones, you know? And what I mean by that was Elijah, after he died, he was so anointed until his bones were even anointed after he was dead. 
And the Bible said on one occasion there was a battle going on and then one brother got killed in the battle. And they, and they took they took the man and said, man, we can't even bury the guy. It's a grave over there. Let's go in the day. That's what grave was. They just threw the dead soldier in the grave. Come to find out that it was Elijah's grave. And when the dead man fell on Elijah, he jumped back to life. Right. Right. Say, amen. Amen. What am I saying? And we know in the name time now that folks that have gone to glory, that ministers still here, them dead folk will bless you. Somebody say amen. 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 Thank God for technology. We are in the technical age. This is basically gone a long time, but this message will still bless you. I look at, I look, listen, I look at Gilbert Patterson I, every, every Sunday morning. I still watch Gilbert Patterson. He's been dead for years. Say amen. And I'm still, I'm still blessed by his anointing. Say amen. Thank the Lord. God bless. God bless. Uh, from the word of the Lord, I've got more I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to go to the word and we'll talk about the rest of the day time for a minute. But I, the Lord put this on my heart the past couple of days. In this day and time that we're living in, I want to give you something that's, that's current. I mean, it's current with, with events that have happened of late. You know, we, we've had a great tragedy in this country of late. It, it's all over the news. If, if you've been watching the news about the, 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 the Zimmerman verdict and the Trayvon uh, Martin situation, Oh uh, my God, we've had, I've been watching CNN religiously. I, I heard the interview with the juror, what was it, G, whatever juror she was. I listened to her. I've been listening to, to Meet the Press. I've been listening to CNN. I've been listening to the Talking Heads. And, uh, and I, I, I just, you know, there's a heaviness upon my heart about the whole situation. There's a heaviness upon my heart, even the mindset of the country that we're in. Look like we've made regress rather than progress. Look like, look like, look like, oh my God. And I thank God for the president. I, 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 I don't agree with everything about the president, but then again, I, I ain't got to agree with uh, a president yet. There's some issues I got with every president. But I do thank God for the president. Amen. I thank God for the president. I voted for the president. I voted for the winner. Say amen. Let me throw this in here. Y'all don't have to think that I think, but I, 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 listen, I'm glad you got him instead of the other fellas. See, you know? I sure am glad. I sure am glad. I sure am glad. Like I said, the man is not perfect, but I'm praying for him every day. I'm praying for President Obama every day. Amen. And look like, look like the more the man tries to do, look like the more people fight it. Look like, look like, and they try to put it behind politics. And you know it's race. You know it's race. You know they don't want to see this black man succeed. You know, you know, that's all it is. And, you know, and those of y'all that don't believe it, you look, look, look at what happened with, with, the, with recent. Here yesterday, or day before yesterday, the president addressed the issue of the Trayvon Martin case. And the folk got mad at him. Now, if he didn't say nothing, folk would get mad. If he did say something, people got mad. So it's better to say something, let him get mad back and not say nothing. I'm glad that the man stepped up and said what he said. And folk got upset. Oh, God, man, you know. It gets me to know that the country is not moving forward. The mindset of people is taking us backwards. And one of the reasons I believe it is, not only just racism, but because the people have turned away from God. The book of St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, and verse 30, but when he, he being Peter, when he saw the wind voices, he was afraid. Yes. And beginning to sit, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Oh, yes. Beginning to sit, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. I want everybody to repeat these words with me. Matter of fact, look at somebody next to you and I'm telling these words. We're sinking. Yes. It's time to call for help. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Lift your hands and say, Lord, save us. Amen. Yes, sir. It's time to call for help. Well, the reality is, it's past call time to call for help. We should have been called for help a long time ago. Sometimes it takes the obvious to get our attention. Because we have a tendency, it's something about human nature, something about human nature. Now, when I say this, I'm not indicting you, I'm not indicting one particular group of people or one particular race of people or one particular category of gender. It's just common nature among all of us. Sometimes we really don't want to acknowledge we're in trouble until trouble begins to overwhelm us. 
There's something about for even when it comes to rehab, you know, it takes a long time to get people that have a problem to acknowledge they have a problem. Yeah, they keep telling you, man, this is a I can handle it. But it can be an alcoholic. No, 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 I, I, I can handle it. I just, I just drink socially. I'll be all right, I'll be all right. See, because sometimes it takes the family to get together. Sometimes it takes, we call you in, you got a problem. No, I'm all right, I mean, you got a problem. Then sometimes we, 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 we sometimes bypass the obvious. We don't want to acknowledge that there's a problem. We don't want to acknowledge there's trouble. Until it look like it's too late. It look like it's overwhelming. It's about to overtake us. Before we finally acknowledge, we need some help. You see, and even so, when time you look at other situations, sometimes you then marriage look like, my God. And it's like what I heard the brother say when he counsels marriage. Sometimes it's usually the woman that comes first and says, we have a trouble. And, well, we'll bring your husband. Yeah, let me bring your husband. I ain't come down. I don't know why I'm going to tell that man about my problem. What I'm going to do. He's going to See, but when she looks like she says, look, even you come, I'm leaving. And even if you find your thumbs on him, that the marriage is about to be over, then he'll come. He'll come. Because look like, as I said before, we have a hard time acknowledging that there's a problem until look like the problem is about to overtake us. When you look at the situation that's happening even in our country today, look like we're on a denial. Look like people are just denying. Everything is going to be all right with the trouble that's gripped the land. My God, gas prices are just shooting through the sea. Oh my God, look like the definition of family has changed. And as I said, on numerous occasions, look like the culture is changing right before our eyes. And whether you believe or not, we are vastly heading in the direction of an ungodly culture where, as I said before, people are offended by the Bible. People are offended by church. People are offended by you talking about God. People are offended by you calling on the name of Jesus. Well, oh, Reverend, you have to respect other religions, and that's not the only one, and you have to respect this, that, the other. As a result, we look like we are vastly heading away from the principles and the foundation of the Bible and the country of America itself, and are vastly heading in the wrong direction but nobody wants to acknowledge that there's a problem but at the same time even when you look at the church world the church world look like the devil and I say the devil because that's all it is the devil has diverted us away from the Bible you know what's happening in this day and time? We've got ministries. And when I speak of ministries, I'm not throwing off on any particular person. And then again, maybe I am. But the reality is, look like our quote-unquote ministries have taken one thing out of the Bible and we made a ministry out of one thing. And we neglected everything else. We made a ministry out of prosperity. We made a gospel out of prosperity. We made everything centered around prosperity. And God wants you to prosper. God wants you to, the Bible says, it's in the Bible, Reverend. God wants you to prosper and be in hell. Yeah, but don't stop there. Keep on reading. Because the Bible says, even as your soul prosper. But we cut that part off. We bring one portion, prosperity. And we made ministries out of prosperity. We've got prosperity crusades. We've got prosperity seminars. We've got prosperity this and prosperity that. And look like people now are prospering. The reality is most of us, we be honest with ourselves, we've got more now than we've ever had in our entire life. But look like we've had so out of all that prosperity. Look like we can't keep marriages together. Look like we can't keep our families together. You've never seen so many prosperous folk get a cuckoo and have nuts. You've never seen so many prosperity folk God to have a nervous breakdown. You've never seen so many folk prosper and depressed. Oh my God, listen, if, 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 if that the package that goes with it, you can have the prosperity. I'd rather walk closer to Jesus and feel his presence than to prosper and be depressed. Let the boss to say, help, Lord. Oh my, oh my God, then we took something else. We made prophecy, just took prophecy. Just one thing, prophecy. And, and we neglected everything else. We left everything else. And everybody's prophesying. That's right, prophet. That's right. I ain't the prophet. Meet me on Wednesday night. I got a word for everybody. Meet me here. That's right. God is speaking. The reality is, brothers and sisters, if God was really doing as much speaking as people said he was doing, everything wouldn't be good news. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. I see this. I see this. I, everything is good. Everything is good. Everybody leaves happy. Everybody. And folks shack it up. Ain't gonna get married, but you want to prophecy. And folks lying. They stop lying, but want to want to prophecy. And folks still cussing. Even on Sunday, I was singing on Sunday, cussing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you want to prophecy. Listen, if God was doing all this speaking, everything wouldn't be good news. God would tell some folks they need to get right. God would tell some folks they need to repent. God would tell some folks they need to get saved in the first place. All this good news is not from God. Right. Right. Somebody say, help God. See, what I'm saying that to say this, it goes back to what I really said, that trouble is all around us, but we fail to realize that we're sinking. We fail to realize that we've gotten our eyes off of Jesus. Well, you all know the story. You all know the story when you read this here, what took place. Uh, first of all, they were in a storm. They were in a storm. And the reality is, brothers and sisters, uh, we go through storms. You see, you, you got to, you got to get this stuff out of your mind that some of these crazy folk have told you that if you say you ain't gonna face something, quite to the contrary, Jesus said, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. But somewhere along the way, somebody got one thing out of the Bible and they neglected everything else. And as I said before, they made a ministry out of prosperity. They made a ministry out of prophecy. And then, of course, they make a ministry out of miracles. And oh my God, all these miracle workers that you see on TV, all these miracle workers that come to town. And not you not ever hear them preach. You all ever hear them go to the Word. All they're doing is we're healing folks and, and, and all kind of stuff. And that's why a lot of times folks get healed in the service. And as fast as they leave the service, what they came in with comes back on them again. It's because it's not real. It's because it's not God. You have to understand when, first of all, when God works a miracle, when God speaks a word, and if a man of God and a woman of God is a true man and a true woman of God, they got to spend time interviewing you first. What is it now? Now what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Uh, uh, all right, all right. What, what, what is your problem? What is your problem? Oh, no, can't get that. Can't. Oh, yeah, that cancer. Yes, I heard that. I heard that. And, and how long have you had cancer? Uh, uh, see, listen. If you really know you're a man of God, you don't have to ask him no questions. You don't have to interview him how long you had cancer. Mm -hmm. What's your doctor's name? Uh, uh huh. Did you have a relapse? Did you have? You know, you just get a bit of a man. My God, I can prophesy after all that. And if I ask you all the questions, you could prophesy after you done interviewed him, all that kind of stuff. But when God is really speaking, when God is really using a man or woman. Then you ain't got to tell them nothing. They'll tell you because God is speaking to them, and God already knows the situation. But I said that to say this. Get back to my original point. Look like somewhere along the way, we've gotten our eyes off of Jesus because we've been caught in the storm. Notice this situation here, and I got to again. Would encourage you to read the whole thing at your legion. I don't read it now when I'm preaching. But the Bible says, first of all, the disciples were out on the boat at night in a storm. A storm. There's something about God. This that makes you unsure. There's something about a storm that makes you afraid. Oh my God, they were in the night in a storm. At night time in a storm. Uh, they didn't see the storm when they went out there. But it was not until they got out there that they realized uh, they were in a storm. And there are some things that can hit you blindside. There are some things that can happen that you didn't see come. Oh my God, there are some things that can happen. There are some things uh, that you can face uh, that you didn't know they were coming before you knew it. It's on you. And they were in the night in a storm that suddenly abruptly had come upon them and came upon them unaware. But the Bible declared in the fourth watch of the night, which I believe was about three in the morning or something in the night, the Bible said that they saw a man walking on the water. Well, that troubled them. That troubled them. You know why? Because that's against the law of nature for a man to walk on the water. And so they, they realized this could not be a natural man. It had to have been a spirit. The Bible said they cried out for fear. Uh, but notice this, Jesus, in the midst of the storm, spoke to them. Jesus, in the midst of the darkness, spoke to them. And brothers and sisters, a lot of times when you're going through, if you could just calm down just a little bit, you can hear the voice of the Lord in the midst of the storm. Lift your voice and say hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to them and said, Be not afraid in his eye. What's interesting about this is when the Lord spoke, nothing changed. And see, this is what we have to understand. Sometimes when God speaks to us, he simply comforts us in the midst of what we're going through. Some things may not change right away, but if you hang in there, sooner or later, it will change. But sometimes the voice of God, the 
presence of God, and the power of God simply comes to comfort us in the midst of what we're going through. The Bible said the Lord spoke and said, be not afraid of his eye. I can imagine the disciples didn't even hear it because they were so panic stricken. I can imagine, let me use my imagination, that they were so busy hollering and screaming until they didn't hear the voice of comfort in the midst of the struggle. But Peter kept his head long enough. And I, I realized that there was even an uncertainty in Peter. And the reason I say that is because he said, Lord, if, if, everybody say if. See, when you use an if, there's an uncertainty. So, so if, if. In other words, and I love this, and I'm going to use my, my imagination here because evidently he had been recognized and learned. I've been around Jesus long enough, but I've seen him heal the sick, and I've seen him cast out devils, and I've seen him raise the dead, I've seen him open blind eyes and unstop deaf ears. So I know the Lord is able to work on miracles. So, 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 Lord, if that's you, I'm going to put this to the test because if it's really you out there, you can allow me to do what you're doing because I've seen your miracles. And I know what you're preaching. I know who you are. And I know what you're coming. And I know that you're, you're, you're God, the Messiah. So, 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 if that's you, you can work a miracle in me. Let me come to you. And don't tell me to swim. That's not the test. Don't tell me to keep the life going. That's not the test. Don't tell me to steer the Lord. And no, no. If that's you out there, if you're the God that I know, the Jesus that I know, that's a miracle worker, that's a soul savior, that's a, a devil driver. If that's you, out there, let me experience the miracle that you're performing. Let me walk to you on the water. Hallelujah. And you know, this is what the Lord wants to do. He wants to give us a miracle in the darkness. He wants to give us a miracle in the midst of the storm. He wants to give us a miracle, but he wants you to know how you willing to step out. And you all know the story. Peter stepped out. Now, I know y'all want to criticize Peter. I know y'all want to criticize Peter. I want Peter to say, Peter would have stubborn himself. Peter would have all Peter would have been stupid, man. He would say, no, no, no. Before he said, you got to give him that credit, he walked. And you know what? He's the only man in history beside Jesus that ever walked on the Water. You might as well give Peter his props. Give Peter his due. Give Peter some love. Peter walked on the water. Yes, sir. He walked on the water. No matter he said, I'm going to give him that in a few seconds, but give him credit. He walked on the water. And you know why he walked on the water? Because his eyes were on Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, we're sinking. The society is sinking. The, the, the culture is sinking. Look like the government is sinking. Look like America is sinking. Look like racism is bringing us down. Look like hatred is bringing us down. Look like backward sticking is bringing us down. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, everything else can sink, but we can remain on the water. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why don't you want to shout hallelujah? So, so as I said before, we're sinking, we're sinking, but it's time to cry for help. And as I said before, sometimes we don't wait, look like, until the situation is about to overtake us, that we finally begin to cry. But this is the thing I love about Peter. He had sense enough to say, Lord, save me. And this is what I think has got to come now. As I said before, not just the society, not just America, but the church is sinking. The Bible said that in the last days, there will be a great falling away. And I think that we've experienced that as we look at the church world today. When I speak of the church world, I'm not just talking about one particular organization or denomination, but I'm talking about Christian as a whole throughout the world. Look like we've turned away from the principles of the Bible. Look like we've taken on and invited other religions and other philosophies and other ideas into our churches. And as a result, it's watered down and it's diverted and it's diluted the truth of the Bible. I'm thoroughly convinced if we go make it, we got the same on the word. The word doesn't need no help. The word doesn't need no assistance. The Bible don't need no updating. Ready you out of turn. I don't care what you say. I'm standing in the word. Because if the word is still this long and has endured the persecution, if the word is still this long and has endured the fire, if the word is still this long and men have risen and fallen and cultures have risen and died and continues to have risen and fallen and the word is still standing. If the word is still this long, I'm convinced that Jesus was right when he declared that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. If I stand on this word, the culture can fail. If I stand on this word, the society will fail. If I stand on this word, the religion will fail. Everything is seeking, but I'm standing on his word. Come on, somebody lift your voice and shout hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. So we're sinking. Look at your neighbor and say, we're sinking. 
Yes, the society is sinking. The society is sinking. America is sinking. Yes, sir. Yes, man. The culture is sinking. As I said before, it looks like there's a bit backwards mindset in the people today. One of the reasons why we're sinking is because we've turned away from the truth. And the Bible says, speaking of this day and time that we're living in, the Bible says they shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That's the problem that's happening in this society. The Bible says they would heap unto themselves teachers. In other words, those that want to be taught will get their own teachers. Those that need to be taught will not listen to sound teaching. But those that need to be taught will get teachers that will teach them what they want to hear. And the Bible said they would teach unto themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, they want somebody to tell them even though they're wrong to tell them that they're right. They want somebody to tell them a lie before they tell them the truth. They want somebody to make them feel good even though they're doing wrong. I'm going to tell you that teacher is going to lead you to destruction. But when you're standing on his word, the Bible said he shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And who the Son set free is free indeed. In other words, freedom is not a feeling, but freedom is a liberation from the inside out. In other words, I can be down and still be free. I can be in trouble and still be free. I can be going through the valley and still be free. I can be troubled by the devil and still be free. Because I've got the freedom on the inside. And it reminds me of a song we used to sing years ago. Something on the inside. Working on the outside. Telling me to go ahead. Something on the inside. Has liberated me. And even though the circumstances may seem the same.
sick. Yes, yes, yes. And it's time to call for help. Yes. And you know what? When you really need help, you ain't got time to look cute. You want to say it now? I almost drowned. I was seven years old. I don't know if I told you other story. I'm gonna tell it to you about it. But I was seven years old, and my cousin, my cousin can swim like a fish. That that, that boy can swim, and it looked easy. And, and we went in the pool. We went in this pool, this this swimming pool. And, and, and you know, I was only seven. I don't remember that being any lifeguards in the pool. I know the pool was probably full of folks. But I don't remember any lifeguard being in that pool. And I watched my cousin. It looked easy. He got to walk out there, waited, jumped, and started swimming. I said, man, I can do that. So I got out there, waited, jumped, and swept to the bottom. Now I was only seven years old. I was only seven years old. And I remember quite well. I remember green water and white bulbs. And he seen me when he up and down three times. I don't know how many times I went down there. I don't even remember. I do remember every time I came up, I yelled, Help! I wasn't trying to be cool. I didn't care if folk talked about me. I'll deal with that later. Right now, man, I need some help. And a little white boy. A little white boy. I have a song of what easy can sense. Save my life. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? Man, if you get desperate, you ain't trying to look cute. Come on. When you find out you're singing, you might not come up. Thank you. You ain't trying to be cool. No, cool. No, man, I need some help. You know, I saw someone on TV the other day with his brother. He was a pimp. He was a pimp. And he was cool. He was dressed with a big long fox coat and a big wide hat. Had his lizard shoes. But he was cool. Cool. He was cool. He didn't talk. He didn't talk. You know, when you're cool, you gotta talk like this. And then I gotta talk like you're cool. Now, like, and so he said, well, let me tell you something, man. Tell me, man, man, man. That's when he talked, because he was cool. Because he was cool. You know. And then I had that wild hat. She was, but man, one of the other drug dealers got after him. And his bodyguards wasn't around. He had to run for us. Like, man, listen, he forgot about his lizard shoes. <laughs> he ran so until his hat flew off. Yeah. He didn't go chase that. Get me, get me the hat. <laughs> no, he was gone, man. And he was, he was like, no, don't chase me. He was, no, 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 no. No, man, listen, he lost it all. Because he was about to get shot. So all that cool went out the window. You about to say amen. Don't tell me, when you realize you're in trouble, it's just like when you pray. See, when we pray, we're trying to be cute when we pray. Y'all know that's right. We want folk to hear us pray. Isn't that a lovely prayer? When you get before the people to pray, I, I've been instructed to give the invocation. And I say, Sam, we we beseech our God that God thy that is set high in the slowness created every one of us each and every and Father we just seek you as our say see you you pray in front of four but man listen get in trouble and you need some quick help you ain't looking cool and quick you get oh God because you need help and so we're sinking. The nation is sinking. And we need help. Everybody's standing. America needs help. America needs help. And you know what? We need to pray. Because see, anytime stuff like this happens, this Zimmerman verdict, anytime stuff like that happens, it's like the city of Armageddon. I'm very proud of our people. That there hasn't been any violence. See, whenever Rodney King, they kicked off. They had to shut LA down. They had to shut LA down. The black folk went crazy. I mean, they went so crazy to the police didn't arrest nobody. They just, they just, really, I remember. 
they just they, 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 they just they just now this you know if you see somebody they're going to run away but they didn't go rest because they had to lock up half of Los Angeles see but I was proud of the fact that we haven't had any crazy demonstration even when folk tried to provoke trouble and I put this up on the internet and I posted it on my Facebook if you, if you, you know where these two guys with two t-shirts got out there trying to provoke a riot and when the guys said no, both take the bait. They just what they want us to do. And they kept on marching. Yeah. See? But I'm saying that to say this. Anytime something like that goes down, so we all know. And I'm not knocking white people over the footballs. Y'all, white people ain't talking about it on the job. They don't say nothing. They don't say nothing. They don't say, did you see that? They don't say nothing. Because they don't want to set you off. They're, 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 they're afraid. They're afraid that you're going to go off. You know, I've asked for, I've asked, sister, have they talked to you about it? They ain't saying nothing. They ain't saying anything. And they didn't do it because they, they don't want to set you off. Because they know it's wrong. They know it's wrong. They know that verdict is wrong. But I'm saying that to say this. And as I said before, this has been on my mind for days. This message. We're sinking. We're sinking. And it's time to call for help. Now I'm going to tell you something, y'all get mad if you want, but you can't expect Oprah to be John a prayer. You can't expect, not because I love Barack Obama, I'm praying for him, but I can't expect him to lead me in prayer. I'm praying for him. You, you, you can't expect, you can't expect me to remind me, he said, I think he did that, he did that, you can't expect him to lead you in prayer. You, you, it's the people of God that are not going to come together. Show you this in the land. Why do you think, you, you, you check out these weather patterns. I'm almost through. But you check out all this crazy weather that's happening in different parts of the country. You know, last year we had, what was it, a, we had, what was it, an earthquake in D.C. And a hurricane in New York. That don't happen. And you know what happened here? They had a thunderstorm in Las Vegas. A thunderstorm. They haven't been raining in years. Everybody said, we ain't never seen like that. To the point where the roof fell in one of the casinos. And rain just fell right in. They haven't even equipped with nothing like that. And all these hurricanes. And all these earthquakes. God is trying to get our attention. And yet the people are just going right on. Sinking and can't see it. Sinking and don't know. Sinking and denying. But the Bible said, get me my people. I'm not, I'm not expecting to open no prayer meeting. My people. I'm not looking for the president to have a prayer meeting. Oh, I want him to pray. I'm praying for him. But my people. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't get together with the Muslims and, and the Buddhists and the Hindus for a prayer meeting. No, no. We, we can get together for a political rally, but, but when it comes to, to praying, no, no. You see, because we're not praying to the same God. I don't care what y'all say. It ain't the same God. And so I got to get to, 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 to my God. I got to, and, and I got to come with an humble heart. Not come and ask God for a new car. That's all. Y'all need to see all that stuff is playing out now. Y'all see it's playing out. A lot of that stuff is playing out. It's playing out. It's playing out. It's playing out. So I'm just saying, just get your thing. You got all happy with that. They got that. Like I said, that whole stuff. And folks can eat their berries together. Folks are depressed. Folks are going nuts. Folks folk are killing themselves. You need to move on. I got moved to the prophet. You need to think about all that stuff. It's about a relationship to Jesus. It's all this stuff is playing out. All that prophecy. I'm not knocking prophecy. But as I said before, God ain't talking as much as y'all say he's talking. And that's playing out. It's starting to play out. But now's the time we need to get on our knees and call on God. Go out to your seat and watch your heads about guys and corporate. These type of services are what we need. Outside, I'm wearing the pieces. It's up loud. I can hear out there on. What's that? What's that sweet out there? Yeah, you know what I'm I can hear it out there. I'm glad it's up loud. Let the folks hear it. Let the folks in the neighborhood hear it. Amen. Let the folks, there's a man of God on this corner and people of God on this corner trying to slush 
cheese from the eternal clutches of hell. Hallelujah. This is what he says about those eyes of clothes. The Lord is in this tabernacle. His presence is here now. And I believe that God is trying to get our attention. I'll say this to you and get ready to pray. I might have said this before last time I was here because I've been singing a lot. But the Lord spoke something to my heart a couple of months ago. And said that the strength and the true gospel that's going to help and deliver the people is going to come from the local churches. The local churches. Why? Because a lot of, and I'm not knocking the big time guys, I'm not messing with them. But see, they're not going to tell you things that's going to make them unpopular. There's something about popularity. Power can change people. Any one of us. Any one of us. And I'm going to persuade you. If I get that big and it changes me, God won't let me get that big. Because there's certain things they're not going to mess with. Certain things they're not going to preach about. Because it will take away their popularity. Right. Joel Osteen, I'm saying this because it's his public knowledge. Joel Osteen got on there and said, Oh, we say without knowing Jesus and all that thing. See, the man is one of the most popular preachers in the yes, country. Yes. You think he's going to say something that would make him unpopular? Yes. Yeah, he'll preach this sin, say it, say the moment. And I said, Moments are saved because he was going back around me, you know. Don't let me stop with that. Let me, let me get off that subject before I get mad. See, man. <laughs> I want to get mad. Y'all might as well admit some things get you mad. Some, some things you talk about, you'll get mad. So don't get on that subject. You're going to see another side of me. I'm going to go off and you ain't going to know who I am. So you know, we don't want to push you that far. So don't push me that far. Hallelujah. Listen, you want to see another man. Somebody say, help Lord. But I'm saying that the local church is where the local ministry, the truth and the of God, are going to preach the gospel and tell you the truth. You know why? Because they know you. And you know them. Because they love you. And you may not at first, but after a while, you're going to love them. Sometimes you're going to love them because they whoop you. Sometimes you're going to love them because they saved your life. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to love because they told your heart here the truth. Yeah. And you got mad, but when you walk up to you, you admit. Okay, yes. Reverend don't look when he told me right. Yeah. Reverend don't told me right. Yeah. I'm in jail now, but Reverend told me right. Yeah. I'm hooked now, but Reverend told me right. Yeah. And the same Reverend that told you right is going to bring you through. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's just tell the Lord. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. As I've attempted to minister this word, I thank you for the courage of this man of God, this pastor, this man of God that walks in your statues and walks in the word. I thank you for his courage. I thank you for this church that is standing with this pastor, this first lady that is standing with her husband, these children that are standing with mom and daddy. I pray, Lord, that your blessing, even this week, let this corner be on fire. Let this corner, let there be such a tremendous spike until the glow of it is seen for miles around. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Let as many as would drive by, walk by, bicycle by, they would feel the anointing of the presence of God. And even though they may not come in this week, it would have an effect upon them that would not leave them the same. Touched by your power. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you the glory. Now, Lord, we pray for this community. Come on, lift your hands all over this auditorium. We pray for this community. We rebuke the spirit of crime. We take a thought over that demon of crime that was set with the sin. We bind that demon and spirit his power by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your word said, What's what we find on earth shall be found in heaven. Your word, your unfailing word said, What's what we lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And by this authority of your unfailing word, we bind every divine force. In this community, we find every demonic plan in this community. 
and we loose healing, deliverance, salvation in the name of Jesus. But there's no greater name than your name. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God the word. Thank you, 
Say, Lord, we're